Okay, 1997 Mazda 626 2.0 liter engine. What we're doing is diagnosing the crankshaft pulley and I'm gonna show you how to see and tell if your crankshaft pulley is uh, slipping. In other words, the inertia ring, the rubber ring in between the uh, crankshaft pulley. You're seeing if the timing marks are off. And first thing you wanna do is you wanna mark it. Get some paint or you can use some white out. But I don't have any white out right now. So you put some paint in there, just like that. Get some toilet paper, roll it up to a fine little uh, tip like that. Dip it in there. Then you want to mark the, uh, the notch in the crankshaft pulley. And the notch is right there. I already marked it, but I want to just show you. There's a little mark right there, a notch. You want to make sure you put some on there like that. That's good enough. You just want to be able to see it so that once you put the timing gun on it, you'll be able to see that better. Because sometimes they get old and the white mark rubs off and then you just gotta handle it. Okay, first step. You gotta see the mark first. Okay, next step, hook up a timing light. Put your uh, negative lead on a negative terminal on a battery, positive on a positive terminal. Hook up your uh, wire, hook the number one, hook the uh, pickup inductor lead on the number one cylinder. Number one, remember that, it's gotta be on number one. Set your timing gun to zero, and when you set your timing gun to zero, your mark should be on your timing mark. For this car, it is uh, 10 to 12 degrees in between there. Now, you can't see no mark. You can see the mark, but the mark is way off to the left. I don't know if you can see it that good, but every once in a while it'll pop up. That means that bad boy is not attached right with the inertia uh, rubber ring. So, you can see it pop up every once in a while. You can get closer. See, no good. Remember, I got the uh, timing gun on zero, and the timing mark down there should be 10 to 12 degrees. Now, when you put it on, let's see, when you put your timing gun on 10 to 12 degrees, it should, your timing mark should be on zero down there. Let's look again. See? Can't see the mark. I mean, it's bouncing off. Oops, sorry. See, can't see the mark. I mean, it's bouncing all over the place. It pops up every once in a while, but it's still off. So, we got a problem there. That's an issue. And it seems like the rubber ring is not holding right anymore. So, we're gonna handle that. Okay, get a little bit deeper. Let's put the scanner on it, okay? So, you don't really need a scanner, but uh, I just want to go into detail on how this can help you out too. Mazda 626, 97, 626, 2.0 liter, keep, firm. Okay, we're going to look at the uh, data stream. We're looking for live data stream. That's what we want. Live data stream is where uh, this computer, this scanner, communicates with the computer on the vehicle and tells you what's going on inside the vehicle as far as the sensors and how everything is running and if everything is on or if you have a code. So on board, like, oh, oh, check this out. On board, readiness tests are complete. Uh, that's smog stuff. It's it difficult when you disconnect your battery and try to uh, pass your, uh, go to a smoggy vehicle and it fails that you need to pass all those first. I'll get into that later in detail on another video. So enter. So right now it's talking to the computer, communicating, entire list. So we're checking the entire list of everything here. So what we want to do is we want to go to timing. Okay. Look at the timing there. 18 degrees, 14 degrees. It's supposed to be between 10 and 12 degrees. 
plus or minus three degrees around there. It's either 10, I think it's 10. But uh, ignition advance is way off, 19, 17. That's at idle. At idle, it's not supposed to be that far advanced. But uh, look, jumped all the way up to 22. So we got a problem here with the uh, timing. Not the timing, the uh, pulley there. Okay, one extra step just in case you got a scanner. Okay, next step is to take off the uh, crankshaft pulley. So, uh, crankshaft pulley has some serious torque on the uh, the uh, crankshaft pulley bolt. Uh, you're gonna probably need um, a crankshaft pulley holder, or you can set up a wrench, a breaker bar going down that way, and crank the engine and try to snap it loose. But uh. Or you can use an electric, electric uh, impact gun or an impact gun like this. But you need a heavy duty one, man, with some air in it. So you can, uh, so you can uh, bust that bad boy loose. Because this thing has a lot of torque on it. So, get that bad boy off. Next step coming up. And okay, one more thing I didn't mention. Uh, your timing marks can be off also on your vehicle. Uh, not only because of the rubber slipping inside here, the inertia ring, uh, they can, it can be off for uh, <coughs> many different reasons. Uh, your timing belt could have slipped a tooth or two or three or whatever. Um, someone could have uh, put the rotor on a couple teeth off on the gears on the camshaft. They could be off by that. So keep that in mind. There's other things also, but for this vehicle, it's the... Uh, the inertia ring that's loose on that timing belt. So just keep that in mind. Okay, after you take off the uh, crankshaft pulley bolt, you gotta take off these belts that are attached to the bolt. There's two of them. One for the power steering and water pump, and then there's one for the uh, alternator. Um, so you gotta take that bad boy off. Well, these bad boys, this this um, belt and that belt. And the way you do that is uh, you gotta loosen it up. There's one, one bolt there and one in the back on the bottom and then you uh, loosen it up loosen it up back here with this same thing with this uh, you got to loosen up the um, uh, power steering pump there's a bolt here right here and underneath this and there's one down there you got to take loose and then you can adjust it with this one down here I don't even know if you can see that but anyway you got to take the belts off now